the steps to create beautiful characters in Blender. There are an infinite amount of ways and workflows to create 3D characters in Blender. But of course, these workflows can always vary between characters and artists. And today I want to give you a list of steps that you can follow to turn your character ideas into actual 3D models and make that reliable and so that they actually look the way that you imagine them. And at the end, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks that you can follow to make the workflow even easier. The first step is the block count. Here the focus is mainly on the proportions of the body and less on the shape. You can already start shaping the individual parts of the body so that it already looks more like a human body rather than some weird blob monster, but it's not the main focus here. I would suggest beginning with the head first, especially if it's a very important part of your character. For me, the head is always an important part of the character, so I make sure that I define the general head and face in the beginning so that I know that I'm on the right track and then I can use that head to define the body proportions. You can duplicate the head and then apply an array modifier to define the proportions of the rest of the body. A good average height is seven and a half heads, including the head, and a good average width is three heads next to each other. The easiest way to block out the body, in my opinion, is to use subdivided cubes, because by moving the vertices around, it's the easiest way to create all the custom shapes that you might need to create the block out. Also make sure that you apply a mirror modifier to the different objects and then use the head as the mirror object so that you can work on one side and the other side follows, which is, you know, just saves a lot of time. I would recommend going in the orthographic front view first. This way you can lay out the most basic proportion first and then afterwards by rotating around you can see where you still need to adjust the shapes or where you need to move around a few limbs. The wrists should roughly end at the crotch and of course the upper arm and lower arm have the same length. The body in its height is also divided into two pieces. We have the upper body and then we have the lower body, consisting of lower body, the legs and upper body, of course, the rest of the body. Of course, you can also stylize your body a little bit more by making the legs, for example, longer to make it look more feminine. But if you're a beginner, I would recommend just sticking with the basic realistic proportions. Also keep gender specific differences in mind. For example, female bodies have narrower shoulders and wider hips and male bodies have wider shoulders and narrower hips. After you've created the basic proportions for the body and roughly defined the shape, we can go to the next stage, which is the merging stage. First of all, I would recommend to create a backup file. This way you can always go back to the previous stage. If you mess up in the next stages, I would recommend doing that for every stage. First, apply all the modifiers on all the objects. This way you can go into scope mode for each different object and reshape them a little bit more so that the objects connect together a little bit better. After you've done that, you can go back into object mode and you can join all the pieces together by selecting everything and then co pressing Ctrl J. What I would recommend is to not join the head and hands into the rest of the body. Usually these parts of the body need more detail, which means more geometry. And by not joining them together into the rest of the body, you can save a little bit of geometry. Now that everything's joined together, you can use a remesh modifier or you can remesh in the scope mode. Apply that modifier and you have merged all these different objects together into one single object. Now you can go into scope mode and you can fill the gaps in between the different parts of the body. You can also now refine the shapes of the body or refine the different parts of the body even more to create a basic human body or whatever, you know, creature you want to create. Once you've created the basic body for your character, you can go into the refining stage. What that means is basically adding characteristics like more muscle definition, or you can also add a little bit more fat to the body, or you can refine the face, for example. I would also recommend blocking out the peripherals like the hair, or if the character, for example, have, has wings, horns, or stuff like that. This way you can already get like a preview of what the character would look like in the end. And if you want to change something before you get there. After you've refined all the different objects, I would recommend joining everything together once again so that it's in one object. And then if you can, I would recommend re-meshing again. This way you can make sure that the object is actually one object and you can fix all of the different gaps that are left, for example, for the neck or where the arms connect to the hand. That would require more geometry for the entire body because you don't want to lose detail in the hands or the head. So if that's possible, I would recommend doing that. If it's not possible, you can also do that later. But make sure that you join everything together. That is important for the next step. The next step is retopology. What we want to do in this step is we want to optimize the character's geometry so that all the upcoming steps are just way, way easier and take way, way less time. 
You can either just retopologize by, you know, laying it out yourself by polymodeling on top of the actual surface, or you can use add-ons to make your life a little easier, maybe work a little faster. With this character, for example, I've used an add-on called soft ramp, so I can use a base mesh that I have and use that base mesh's topology for my new character. If you're not 100% sure how retopology works or how you do it effectively, I have two videos that you can check out to learn a little bit more about it. So the poly count, I, I can't really give you a exact number. You probably have to research a little bit what would be recommended for your use case. After the retopology is done, you can use the multi resolution modifier to capture the very, very fine details, applying a subdivision modifier, basically. And then you can increase the subdivision level to bring back or add some of that detail that might have been lost or that you want to add. After we've optimized the character, it is time for step five rigging. Rigging basically means we give the character a skeleton, which makes it able to move. For that, I would recommend enabling the Rigify add-on in Blender. You can just look it up in the add-ons page in the settings. And then I would use the human meta rig. This way you already have a setup skeleton that you can now use for your own character. I would recommend though to remove the face bones and not use the Rigify button because the actual Rigify skeleton is made out of multiple layers of bones, which can be very confusing, especially if you're a beginner. I would recommend using a real skeleton as a reference. This way it's easier to place the bones in the right spots. Generally, the bones follow the basic anatomy of a human skeleton. Or of course, if you have creatures, then it might be a little different. But of course, for humans, you can just follow the basic human skeleton. Also make sure that you pay attention to the bone rotation or the axis of the bone. You can see them by enabling the setting in the bone settings. The way I set up my axis is so that the Z axis basically points into the space that the bone would rotate into. It comes a little bit with time, but that just makes it easier to pose the character afterwards. Also, of course, if you have a character that requires more bones, for example, if they have like four arms, then of course you can add more bones as well. After you set up your skeleton, you can parent the character's mesh to the skeleton by using automatic weights, but then you probably have to adjust some weights that create some weird deformations. The usual areas that I look into for that would be especially for the armpit and also the head oftentimes it's kind of distributed into the different uh, spine bones. I would recommend just having one bone for the head and applying all the weight, basically full on red to only that bone. You can switch between the bones and weight painting by clicking the different vertex groups. After we've given the character a skeleton and it can move with good deformations, we can now go into the next step. We can give it a pose. A tip for dynamic poses is try to rotate almost every bone in your skeleton, at least a little bit. This way you can make sure that the poses look more dynamic. If a lot of the bones are still in the default pose, it can look very stiff. Also adding asymmetry helps a lot with making the poses more dynamic. If you want to try out different poses for your character to kind of add some variations, you can also use the timeline and then in pose mode, select all the bones and then insert keyframe rotation to have basically different poses saved that you can move through in your timeline. And then you can decide which pose you like the most. For the pose that you decide to go further with, I would recommend using shape keys or the multi-resolution modifier. You can fix some more detailed deformation errors that you can't really fix that well with weight painting or better rigging. And after the pose is done and you basically perfected the pose by adding some deformation adjustments, we can go into the next step, which is peripherals. Peripherals basically means stuff like hair, wings, horns, maybe even teeth or stuff like that. Everything that isn't necessarily fully included in the body, but is still part of the character. You can now, if you haven't already, create all these objects and add them to the model. In this stage, you would also add the clothing for the character, the outfit. The way you can do that is by either reusing the geometry of your retopologized body model, or you can just, you know, model it on top of it by polymodeling, simulating or whatever, you know, technique you want to use. Once the basic outfit is done, I would also recommend adding some folds there, especially specific to the pose to make it look a little bit better and just, you know, a little bit more realistic. And once the model is done, we can go into the last step, which is shading. Shading basically means creating the basic materials for the different parts of the object, the clothing and the body and all that. The way that I usually do it is I set up a basic principle BSDF with defining the roughness and color and all that first. And then if I want to refine it a little bit more, I would UV unwrap the model to create custom textures, for example, for the face, to create makeup, for the roughness, you maybe want to use custom textures. But if you're happy with the basic shading setup, then of course, you don't have to do that. And this means you've basically completed all the steps to create your character. 
Now let me give you a few tips and tricks so that you can create even better looking characters. If you don't think you can create characters in Blender just yet, then at the end of this video you're going to find a video that is exactly for you. The first one is if you're a beginner and you still need to learn a lot of the anatomy of the body, start with more simplified reference images that give you the main shapes of the body. Starting with more simplified shapes, you can already create characters without having to know each muscle perfectly and how it contributes to the shape of the body. If you want to go a little bit deeper into anatomy, I would recommend looking at all the different muscles in the body and seeing where they attach. Bones, except for in the face, always attach to two different bones so that they can bring them closer together. By learning where they attach, you can see where they go basically and how they contribute and where they contribute to the shape of the body. Creating more realistic poses also means keeping muscle deformations in mind. So if you, for example, flex your arm, the biceps would flex, which means it gets shorter and I guess um, bulgier <laughs> or um, rounder. Adding that into the pose would make it look way more realistic as well. Also, the steps are not, you know, set in stone. You can sort of intertwine them a little bit. For example, if you want to add the wings or you want to shade the card before you, for example, create the hair, you can do that. You don't have to fully follow the step-by-step -step list. If you want to, you know, change it a little bit, that's always okay. If you create a static render of your character, sometimes you don't actually need to create a rig and UV and wrap and everything. If you only really want to create a sculpt without, you know, very complex shading or whatever, you can also use the pose brush to pose the character. This way you can save a lot of time that you don't necessarily need to spend. Oftentimes it can be kind of hard to find the exact reference that you need. The easiest reference you could find is you. Having a mirror or just looking at your body, how it moves if you do the different poses and then transferring that to your actual character can make your sculpts or your characters or your poses so much better because you, you can look at yourself and see how everything moves, how everything deforms and you don't have to look for references on the internet. And the last tip that I have for you is to work in layers. Creating the muscle layer and the bone layer, sort of combining the two and kind of keeping in mind how the bones visibly deform the body. And then on top of that, I would add the fat later. This way you can make sure that the muscle layer looks right and then the fat layer on top of the muscle layer looks right. If the fat layer looks good, but the muscle layer doesn't, it doesn't really work that well. So you can make sure that by separating these layers that you can create more realistic characters. If you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comments. Thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you next time. See ya! Thank you.